we're on. Yes, now it's on. Okay. You ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Just wait for Rochelle. Okay. Rochelle, we're good. We're good. I'd like to call to order this meeting of the Site Plan Review and Appearance Board for Wednesday, February 8th, 2023. Rochelle, when you're ready, if you can call roll, please. Sure. Stephen Cohen? Yes. Allison Thomas? Yes. Benjamin Baffer? Here. Carol Perez? Here. Annette Wright? Yes. Linda Perdo? Here. Dana Adler? Here. Next item is the approval of the agenda. Ms. Alvarez? Do we have any changes to the agenda? There's no changes to the agenda. Thank you. Um, I'd like a motion to approve the agenda. Move approval of the February 8th, 2023 agenda. And a second. Agenda, thank you. Next item, uh, there's no meeting we actually, minutes. We actually need to roll call the motion. Oh, roll call please, thanks, Rochelle. Stephen Cohen? Here. Motion to that would be yes. Agenda. Oh. Stephen Cohen? Oh, yes. Thank you. Allison Thomas? Yes. Benjamin Bapper? Yes. Carol Perez? Yes. Anna Gray? Yes. Linda Purnell? Yes. Dana Adler? Yes. Okay, there's no meeting minutes today, so we're going to, at this point, we're going to swear in anybody who will be speaking before the board on any matter regarding public comments or on any agenda item. Please rise and be prepared to be sworn in. Please raise your right hand. As the authority vested in me as a notary of the state of Florida, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Please be seated. Thanks, Rochelle. <coughs> At this point, if there's anyone from the public who wishes to speak on any item that is not on the agenda, that is in the purview of the Site Plan Review and Appearance Board, we would welcome your appearance. Seeing and hearing none, I'd like to touch on a few things. If you'll be presenting tonight, please use the podium on my right. Staff will be using the podium on my left. Um, next on the agenda is the approval of consent agenda, but there is none for today, so we can skip that. But now I'm going to read the quasi-judicial rules. This hearing shall be conducted in accordance with the City of Delray Beach quasi-judicial rules. The applicant and the city shall be permitted to present their case. The public shall be allowed to speak for three minutes each or a maximum of six minutes if the person represents an organization or a group of people who are present but agree not to speak. The City Commission, board members, staff, and the applicant may be allowed to cross-examine a witness. The city or the applicant will be allowed to offer rebuttal testimony. The decision to approve or deny an application or appeal may not legally be made upon personal views as to whether a project is a good project or not, nor may a decision be based on the number of citizens who support or oppose a particular project. The law requires that all decisions must be made on the basis of whether the project meets the requirements of law, the comprehensive plan, and the land development regulations. Okay. All right, I believe we are now ready for our first agenda item. Good evening, board members. Julian Gedanik, Senior Planner. Uh, this time I'd like to enter into the record uh, file number 2022-238. Uh, it's a class five site plan known as the North Edge. I'll turn it over to the applicant representative at this time. Madam Chair, board members, my name is Gary Leopolis. Address is 1045 East Atlantic Avenue. Our firm is GE Architecture. We are the uh, architects of this project. Also with me tonight is Jeff Costello, who's our land planner and will also be doing part of the presentation. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Eliopoulos, if I can interrupt. Um, I have to ask the board, is there any ex parte communication on this item? No. No. Yes, okay. I'm going to step down on the project as a landscape architect. Okay. Thank you very much. 
All right. Thank you. Let's let Ms. Perez step down, and you can continue, Mr. Eliopoulos. Thank you. Thank you. Just figuring what button I hit. Okay, so our site is located um, on North Federal Highway, actually at the intersection of North Lake Ave and the east side of Federal Highway. Site is approximately uh, 35,000 square feet. It's actually like 34,900 and something. Um, basically, we are GC zoning, uh, general commercial, and to the east of us and to the north of us is uh, residential. To the south of us is a mixture of residential and commercial. Uh, you know, North Federal Highway had a plan that was done like in, I think it was around 2000, where it's talking about they want residents, they want commercial, and they want this all to get developed. We're, we think this is the first component of many that are going to come through this area that's going to have a nice blend of commercial and residential. Uh, the site right now is vacant. Uh, so what you're seeing right here is we're actually looking east on it uh, and along North Lake Ave. Uh, you're going to see around the surrounding area, some of it's already getting developed. Other areas, it is still vacant or undeveloped. Um, and some of the other buildings around here are kind of uh, eclectic. Some are old, some are new. Uh, to the south of us is a bank, uh, which is Paradise, which I think was done several years ago. And Okay. Um, looking at our site plan, uh, basically what we did was this, is the following. We wanted to take the traffic off of Federal Highway. Um, we basically have our entrance coming off of North Lake Ave, and I'm not sure why this pointer is not working. There it goes a little bit. We've got a, a amenities building. One of the things that we're trying to do is separate this building from the residents to the east. Um, we've got a, a pool, fire pit. We've got an open trellis area we have bathrooms and an outdoor kitchen and Julian this thing is not working it seems to be working better thank you um, one of the key things is again we took the entrance we brought it down off of North Lake Ave uh, our garages are actually on the east side but it is being buffered from our amenities building uh, our building is approximately 80 feet off of the east property line, again, trying to create a nice buffer, also along with all the landscaping that we've done for the residents in the area. Uh, Site-wise, our building is under the 40% as far as the lot coverage goes, and we exceed the pervious area of the open space. Uh, one of the things you're seeing along the left-hand side Federal Highway is we are given a dedication to the right-of-way that's for widening Federal Highway. It's approximately 1,500 square feet. And going around the perimeter, we have an architectural uh, decorative staggered uh, railing system with actually nice dark wooden, actually Peruvian teak uh, walls that actually separate the residents from the pedestrians that are walking by. Uh, there's our loading space down at the bottom. Uh, so what we have here is actually 24 uh, covered parking spaces underneath the building. Uh, the blue right there that we highlight is the vertical circulation. There's our parking. Again, this is all covered. There are actually gates coming in to the property. Um, as far as uh, there's that right-of-way dedication, uh, we are providing storage units for all of the units. Uh, we also have additional uh, bike storage for the residents here. Um, and then there's other amenities within the building, which is basically stuff that actually stores the pool area equipment, uh, the mechanical, that's actually for the trash. So everything is self-contained onto this uh, site and into the building. So basically what we have is there's two floors of residence. Uh, on the second floor, there's actually five units. Uh, so there's one to those two are basically the same unit. They are flipped on each other. And then along the south side, which is the third unit, and then the fourth and fifth, they are actually a mixture of these combinations. Uh, the square footages range anywhere from 2,000 to uh, 4,000 when you look at the entire building. Uh, these are all the balconies. Every unit does have several balconies that come with their property or their unit. Uh, this is the third floor. So these two north units are basically exactly the same as the second floor. And then what happens is on the south side of the building, we actually have larger units. 
So we basically have uh, two bedrooms, three bedrooms, and four bedroom units out of these nine that we're proposing. Just a little blow up of the plan so you can see. Um, they basically have three bedrooms, three and a half bathrooms. They have their own laundry facility. They have storage. And again, they have their uh, balconies for their privacy. This is just another unit just to show you the variation that we do have. This particular one's a little larger. It does have, again, three and a half bathrooms, but it also has the three bedrooms with an office gym and then several areas for storage along with its own laundry room. For the elevations, uh, what we have going on here, this actually came before you guys, I believe, when we were doing our conditional use because we didn't have a commercial component. Uh, one of the things that we did state to this board is that our, in the GC, you're allowed to go to 48 feet. We are keeping our deck at 35, as we did promise you last time we came here. The only two features that actually go up towards that and are still below the 48 is the stair tower and the elevator. Um, Basically, around this building, we have on the ground floor, when we have our garage, we do have some openings there, but it's all decorative aluminum that uh, basically separates that from the street. Uh, the dark wood that you're seeing is, again, that Peruvian teak. Uh, it's a composite material that we're doing. Uh, and then we have a porcelain slate gray that's going up the vertical elements. Uh, this is actually our north elevation as far as looking south. This is where you would enter into the property off of North Lake. Uh, you can see on the left-hand side is our amenity building. Uh, this is our um, south elevation, I'm sorry, east elevation. So this is where the garage doors, we have these glass garage doors that are actually enclosing the garage uh, from the residence to the east. And what you don't see is that the amenity building is actually in front of this. So again, it's a good buffer for the residents. Uh, right here is the south elevation, similar to the north. One of the things that we have done with the outside of this building is we actually have these wing walls, actually fins, if you will, that go up. They are on an angle. We also broke up the front of the building with the parapet, so it does actually taper down to give it a little more interest along the street side. And now I'm going to turn it over to Jeff. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Good evening, board. Um, so at this point, we're the required findings with regard to the site plan. Um, the required findings can be made with regard to LDR section 3.1.1, uh, land use map consistency, the zoning, is, the GC zoning is preferred uh, under the GC land use designation. The regulations allow freestanding multifamily development, which the conditional use for which was approved on January 17th by the city commission. With regard to concurrency, staff's report confirms that project meets all level of service standards and with regard to consistency uh, as well as with the conditional use positive findings uh, can be made with regard to the goals objectives and pos uh, policies of the comprehensive plan the same for the site plan the, this is all consistent with the comp plan with regard to the standards for site plan or plat actions positive findings can also be made with those uh, of 3.2.3 a through j those are all outlined in your staff report. Uh, the proposal meets the applicable, applicable standards, and there are no identified areas of concern with regard to the impacts of the overall development. With regard to compliance with the LDRs, Gary touched on it a little bit uh, with regard to uh, how this all complies. Uh, positive findings can be made that this development will, um, will be compatible and harmonious with the adjacent and nearby properties and the city as a whole and will definitely enhance the North Federal Highway Corridor. Site plan analysis required findings, all the uh, applicable development standards listed on the screen have been met. Um, it, and one more moment, with regard to compatibility, as Gary did indicate, the building is situated to the Federal Highway, consistent with the Federal Highway uh, plans and regulations, the overlay district regulations, continuing a buffer from the lower density residential to the east, and then with regard to the landscape plan, uh, positive findings can also be made with regard to, the, to those required uh, in 4616 as far as the objectives and the design standards. Um, 
as you see with this, this landscape plan, it's coming up here, uh, it's well landscaped and buffered, uh, the adjacent residences. Um, you know, the, along Federal, there are street tree oaks that will be planted within the dedicated area. That's 10 feet, then you have the additional 10 feet buffer before you get to the building itself. Along the east side, trees are minimum required to be 25 feet on center adjacent to lower density. Uh, this uh, actually, we have great, uh, more trees than are required the distance ranges, I think between 15 and 25. Uh, plus there is the wall along the east side. Uh, so with regard to this as well, we did have to request a, a, a waiver. Uh, our proposal includes the installation of the uh, decorative wall. Uh, it's actually more of a fence like, like, Jeff, uh, like Gary mentioned. Uh, it does step back. It has, uh, basically has a two foot concrete base with the wood rails. It fits really well in. It's almost like a landscape feature along Federal Highway, provides security. Um, it's very transparent, landscape feature, security, and enhances and beautifies the North Federal Highway corridor. We strongly believe that the, the waiver findings can be made as outlined in the LDRs, uh, as stated on the, on the screen. Positive findings can be made with regard to 47B5. And with the architectural elevations, uh, the project complies with the criteria for board action in 4618, one through three. And uh, as Gary explained previously with regard to these elevations and, and the project as a whole, uh, we respectfully request uh, your approval this evening. And we're available for any, any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Costello, Mr. Gadonic, for the city, please. Oh, I can use the key. I can use the keyboard. You can literally. Okay. Good evening again, board members. Julian Gadanek, senior planner. So before we get this time is agenda item 9A. It's the North Edge Class 5 site plan. Uh, it's just under one acre in size. Uh, current use is vacant, as you saw by the pictures from the applicant. The land use designation is general commercial, and the zoning district is general commercial as well. Uh, these are the surrounding properties. I think the uh, east building, I think that's been demolished now. And there's another uh, sort of low scale multifamily under development right there. To the south, you have a commercial bank. And then this is the subject property. These were the prior buildings that, again, have been demolished. It was previously uh, single family residential and then a um, one story commercial with residential as well. Most recently, a yoga studio. So the request before you today is a class five site plan application, including a landscape plan, architectural elevations, and a landscape waiver for a nine unit multifamily residential development. Um, I just wanna give you some background about the project. Uh, so the applicant referenced that this has been before this board, but I believe this actually went before the planning and zoning board. So I think this is the first time this board is seeing it. Uh, in order to develop freestanding multifamily in the GC commercial district, they uh, needed to obtain approval of a conditional use that allows that without providing any commercial. So they went before the Planning and Zoning Board in November. They received a recommendation of approval for the conditional use. That went to City Commission in January, and it was approved uh, with two conditions of approval. Uh, the height to the, um, the flat roof uh, does not exceed 35 feet, and then uh, that there is um, a pedestrian accessible lobby entrance provided along Federal Highway. Uh, both of which the uh, proposal complies with, which you'll see in a second. So this is a so the broad image of the overall site plan. I'll zoom in in a couple areas um, in more detail in a second. But just to give some project detail points, it's nine units. Uh, as mentioned by the applicant, it's a bedroom mix from two to four bedrooms and about 2,000 to uh, a little over 3,000 square feet. Total gross building square footage is 41,000 square feet approximately. Uh, there's ground floor parking um, under the building, which is screened from view along Federal Highway, as well as um, Lake Avenue. So both both um, streets have the, the parking screen from view, which is uh, you know a good feature. There's pedestrian connectivity uh, to Federal Highway um, from that uh, pedestrian lobby on the ground floor, and then there's also a dedicated bicycle storage room, uh, which encourages you know mixed mode use. So looking at the left side of the image, which is west side facing federal highway you can see the ground floor parking 
Uh, this project has a surplus of one space. They're required to provide uh, 20, uh, 23 spaces. They're providing 24. Uh, you have the main lobby entrance. You have the dedicated storage space. Um, vehicle circulation occurs off of Lake Avenue, which uh, decreases conflict points along the busy arterial and allows for a better pedestrian experience on Federal Highway because you don't have cars coming in and out on that road. Looking at the east side, which is adjacent to the uh, low-scale residential, as the applicant mentioned, this is where their amenities are proposed, so the bulk of the massing and bulk of the structure is shifted closer to the commercial corridor, uh, providing more of a buffer between those lower-intensity residential uses. Uh, looking at the landscape plan, as the applicant touched on, it's you know very, very thoroughly landscaped. The uh, image, the color-coded image on the left kind of breaks down the different Zone, uh, zoning requirements and how they're complying with that. Uh, you can see there's a, a perimeter landscape uh, buffer around the entire project, essentially. Uh, touching on the landscape waiver, uh, there is, they're required to provide a 10-foot special landscape setback from Federal Highway. To, um, there's restrictions on what you can put in that setback. Uh, the code does allow for certain structures like a decorative wall to be placed in there if a waiver is granted, so they require the waiver to do that. Uh, the applicant is proposing a decorative wall ranging in height from about three to six feet within that setback. So I've kind of flipped the image. The red zigzag essentially <laughs> indicates where the wall is. And then there's the property line, which is after right-of-way dedication. Um, and then the 10-foot required setback, which also mimics the proposed building setback as well, which is at 10 feet. So the, the board should consider whether this layout is sufficient to meet the criteria for the waiver approval. Uh, I'd like to just point out that there are some areas um, where it is very close to the property line, even though they are sort of staggering it and, and pr providing recesses in certain areas. There are you know, those corners where it essentially ab abuts the property line. Uh, typically, if a perimeter wall is proposed in the city, uh, there's a two-foot setback that's required so that there can be foundation landscaping on the exterior of that wall. Uh, in most parts of this proposal, they're able to provide that, except again for just where it directly sort of has that 90 degree right angle. So just something for the board to consider. At this time, the sidewalk is fairly set off, uh, the current sidewalk, but because they're doing that right of way dedication, there could be a time in the future where the sidewalk has changed, the right of way pattern has changed, and there could be a sidewalk closer, potentially. So just something to consider. This is the uh, waiver criteria you need to consider. It's touched on in the staff report in more detail. Uh, now moving on to design, as the applicant um, elaborated on, I'll be brief. It's uh, masonry modern uh, style, it has a lot of you know, use of large windows, stucco, and some, some wood material intermixed throughout. Uh, it's hard to see on this screen, but this, the height does comply with the condition the commission adopted with their conditional use approval. Um, the top of the roof is at 35 feet, and then there's some rooftop appurtenances that extend uh, upwards of that, but they don't exceed the uh, maximum of 48 feet for the, uh, for the location. Uh, these are the elevations uh, on the interior, uh, so south and east. Mimic some of the same architectural style, and this is a rendering that you know, gives a good idea of conveying the overall uh, architecture. Uh, I just want to actually go back to these. The, so the elevations facing the street, uh, we did work with the applicant to provide um, some window treatment on the ground floor, even though that's, you know, on the inside, that's a garage and storage. We thought it was important that they kind of dressed it so that it benefited the pedestrian experience. So they've done that, which is a good touch in our opinion. Again, back to the rendering. And again, lastly, for you to consider is just sort of the context of the overall surrounding area. These aren't directly adjacent, but just the Federal Highway Corridor at large does have a mix of commercial buildings of different sizes and, and age, and then has some existing multifamily residential mixed in. So as you evaluate the proposal, just consider what is currently around this area. Lastly, your required fine rings per section 3.1.1. Uh, it's been detailed uh, in the staff report as well. And your board options moving forward are to move approval of the classify site plan application, uh, landscape plan architectural elevations, and landscape waiver finding uh, consistency with the comprehensive plan and the land development regulations. You can move to deny the request. 
finding that is, is not consistent with the comprehensive plan and does not meet the criteria in the land development regulations, or you can move to continue with direction. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Gadonik. Is there anyone who wishes to speak from the public at this time? All right, um, Mr. Costello or Mr. Eliopoulos, do you have any rebuttal from, from the city's report? No, we do not. Okay. And it's time for board comments then. Mr. Baffer, would you like to make comments? So I had a question for, for staff. So you mentioned that the wall, on, I'm, I'm concerned specifically on what's going on on the east side of the property, east of the, east of the amenities, because we saw an elevation of the building, but we didn't really see what this is going to look like from on the other side of the amenities. So there's a, there's a six foot masonry wall, and there's a, looks like there's a Clusia hedge on the inside of the wall. I saw that on the, on the landscape plans. Yeah, maybe it'll go to the landscape plan. That's probably. Yeah, so they're proposing, it's my understanding, I, they're proposing a perimeter wall around the entire perimeter. I, I don't believe they're proposing landscaping on the exterior of that wall. That's the wall that you mentioned. Is, is that wall two feet? No, it's six feet. Yeah, the two feet, or I think it's three feet, is um, portions of the wall that are oriented towards the street. Sort of I'm thinking ebbs about, and flows I'm, in height. I'm asking about the six foot masonry wall that's yeah. on the east property line. For, yeah. Is that on the property line or is that two feet inside the property yeah, line? I believe that's on the property line. We The two foot setback for landscaping is only required if it's facing a right of way, not for interior. Not lines. if you're facing another no. not private property. So, so the people on the other side of that wall are going to look at a wall. Correct, unless they plant landscaping on their side if they so choose. Okay, just if I may, that is being redeveloped of a, a contemporary house. So they will have, they have their landscape plan that's required by code um, within that site. So yes, the, the, the wall is on the property line to provide that specific buffer. But on the interior edge of that wall adjacent to the amenity, there will be heavily landscaped with trees and then the hedge on the uh, on the interior edge of that wall. Is there a, is there a foundation to that wall? Yeah, actually, what will happen is when we actually submit for permit, we will be offsetting the wall by one foot. We offset the wall by one foot off of a property line so that our owner developer can maintain the wall can actually try to get and paint it uh, when you talk about the hedging it is always an issue when you're dealing with neighbors who's going to take care of the landscaping so that's why ours is on this side as far as the foundation goes the actual footing will be three inches off of the property line it's called a cantilever footing and it's going to come back into our property so that there will be no footing on the adjacent land you're going to have offset it will be an offset yeah offset footing yes so the the person on the other side can dig Yes. Big holes to put is that that's kind of what I'm. What yep. I'm. No, they definitely will have full access to their property. Okay. Go ahead. Thanks, Ms. Thomas. I think you asked all the questions that I had, so um, I liked. Happy to do your job. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So nothing further. It's gray. Um, I think it's a good looking project. Uh, I had the same concerns. It's funny. Great project, but everybody's talking about the wall. The wall. <laughs> um, the, the zigzag is what concerns me, and um, I trust Carol. <laughs> um, but can you, Carol's not here to dumb it down for us, so can you please um, explain why that can't be? I understand it follows the curve, but that's, Basic, that's a deep. So the, the, our thought was by offsetting it, you're not going to see this straight wall going down. I okay, see. so we wanted to break it up. At each, let's say, vertical line, that's a solid element, and that's going to be that Peruvian teak that I talk about. Okay. When you do the straight shot, we have a two-foot section, and then we have decorative railing on top of that. 
So it really is going to break it up nice, and you are right. Uh, I know Carol's not here. She did an excellent job on making a good blend of that. One of our concerns were, you know, some of the unit owners, if they did have kids, when they're coming out of our main lobby, you know, we wanted to have a little bit of a barrier there. And at the same time, as you're walking along that area, we wanted to break it up. And we felt that was a good streetscape to balance the building with the pedestrians, and that's why we went that route. Mission accomplished. Thank you. Sit down. Thank you. Mr. Cohen. Um, yeah. Um, so where is the setback in, that, in this picture, the 10-foot setback? What, what? Can you point to it, Julian? It's right yeah. on our building. I mean, where our building so, is set back. The so there, yeah, so there is a faintly visible hash line, not the, the thicker property line, but kind of where my dotted figure that says 10 foot required setback, it points to it and that's, you know, uh, parallel with the setback at an angle. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, so based where the entrance to the lobby is, I think that's the closest point to where the building is to the property line. That's 10 feet and then as you move I guess left on the frame it's slightly more set back than 10 feet where the building is uh, but it's roughly at that angle okay all right so and then where's the sidewalk in this picture is, is it after the property line is it yes the sidewalk I'm not sure the exact distance but it's um, a fair ways uh, west of the property line at the top of the screen. Right, it's within, actually, it's within the existing right of way on the, and so where we're removing the, the curb cuts and installing a new sidewalk, that's me code for DOT standards, but that's all within the existing right of way, but we were required to dedicate the additional 10 feet. So that sidewalk's just to the west of the right of way designation. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, um, it is pretty close to that uh, property line. What, are there no concerns with that or no? So, I mean, that's really for you to determine if you're well, concerned I mean, with it. I mean, as mentioned, just to consider, it, it is close. So yeah. there, there, would, there could be a scenario in the future if the right of way is expanded and you know sidewalk shifts in that you might have the wall in very close proximity to a future sidewalk, but mm -hmm. um, I'm, Okay. Whether it's a concern or not, I, I, yeah, I'm not right. sure. More. Thank you, Ms. Perdue. Um, my question is about the height. Um, mm -hmm. So although they could have built higher, the planning, zoning, and the commission said they have to stay at a certain height. Is that my, my yes. yes. Yeah, correct. Okay. And then by saying that, there's no way this will then turn into a outdoor entertainment area or use for the owners to, because um, I know there's access you know, for the uh, elevator and for stairs and things, it, it won't turn into the grills or you know, that kind of thing? So they are not proposing that now. Theoretically, I think they could. Uh, like the, the code allows for active rooftops as long as you're not enclosing them. Um, I don't know if they have any intention for that, but they would have to come back through a site plan like modification to change that. So it's not that it's prohibited, but they would have to go through another process to make that change if they wanted to. I was gonna say, if you want me to address it, we, we only have one stair tower going up, that's for the fire department. The elevator has an override, so that's why that goes, yeah. but it's not accessing the roof. Mm -hmm. If we were to do it as an entertainment thing up there, we'd need two means of egress off of that deck, and we only have the one stair, so that won't be. Just to clarify, um, there are height restrictions that limit how high in lower density multifamily districts, which this would take, even though it's GC, would sort of take on the requirements of, of RM. So 26 feet is the limit. So because their roof is higher than that, they actually could not. Okay. Yeah, so, so that's not something that they would be able to pursue. All right. I think this is a terrific project. I mean, I'm, I'm pleased um, with the there's been tremendous thinking behind this project, as well as the style and the uh, decorative wall, the landscaping, the different size of units. Um, and I also had questions about the proximity of the wall and the shape and the, and the, and the, uh, the substance of it. So, but I think pretty much all been answered. Um, thank you, board. So can someone please make a motion? Oh, 
sorry. Class 5 site plan application 2022-238, including the landscape plan, architectural elevations, and landscape waiver for a nine-unit multifamily residential development by finding that the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and meets criteria set forth in the <coughs> development regulations. Second. Michelle, can you please call roll? Stephen Cohen? Yes. Allison Thomas? Yes. Benjamin Baffer? Yes. Carol Perez stepped down. Annette Gray? Yes. Linda Perdell? Yes. Dane Adler? Yes. Congratulations, you've been approved. Great, if we could bring back Ms. Perez for the next item, please. Good evening, the next item is Regions West Atlantic. This is a class five site plan uh, that you'll be considering at 4760 West Atlantic. And for the record, it's file number 2022-201 and the applicant will present first. Thank you. Is there any ex parte communication on this item? No. 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 Great, thank you. Mr. Savage, uh, the, right? Uh, no, I am Matthew Lynn, uh, okay. also representing Bowler Engineering. Um, I have been sworn in. Um, we're located at 1900 Northwest Corporate Boulevard, Boca Raton. So yes, this is for the Regions Bank project. Thank you. The project location is in West El Rey. Um, it is the southeast corner of West Atlantic Avenue and Waitley Road. We are in the GC Zoning District and we are abutting um, the R R. 1A district to the south and RM9, I believe that is, to the east. Um, we have West Atlantic to the north and Waitley um, on the west. And across the street from Waitley, uh, on Waitley is the Dunkin' Donuts. So the top left picture is um, uh, you know, a view of our site from West Atlantic Avenue. Um, to the right is a picture of our site from uh, Waitley Road. Okay, so this is the existing site. Um, you know, it's just a uh, four thousand, roughly four thousand square foot um, block building uh, to be demolished, and really all, most, if not all, of the site uh, amenities are going to be demolished as well. So the proposed scope of work um, is the redevelopment of a forty-seven hundred thirty-eight uh, square foot block building, uh, replacing that with a nineteen hundred square foot. Bank, uh, with a two-lane drive-through and bypass lane. Um, the site area, you know, we are uh, reducing, imper reducing impervious area um, and we are, uh, you know, above the minimum required interior landscape area as well. And for our proposed site layout, we have uh, the bank centrally, centrally located on the site. The site is about just under a half an acre of an area. Uh, Vehicles will come in on the south entrance, and the two lanes to the, the north um, are the drive through lanes, and then the one lane on that south side is the bypass. Uh, vehicles can come around the site, park, and then enter into the building, or they can continue on and then exit um, onto Waitley on the north side of the site. Um, for site improvements, we are also proposing a sidewalk along Waitley Road, which does not currently exist, so that will connect the um, residential uh, homes to the south of us to West Atlantic Avenue. Um, and yes, we are also proposing a less intensive use than what is out there currently. Uh, up here is our landscape plan. We are you know, meeting all code requirements for landscaping. Uh, we have street trees provided, and we are also providing a landscaping hedge along the south side and the east side uh, due to us being adjacent to residential properties. And then 
Up next is the architectural plans. Um, with me, I have uh, Jack with the architectural team, and also I have Brett uh, with the landscaping team as well, if you have questions on that. And we have Julio uh, representing the local regions branch. Hello, I'm Jack Marshall with BDG Architects out of Birmingham, Alabama. I'll be the architect of record on this project, and I'm excited to present our bank to you. Oops. This is the 1900 square foot Regions Bank. It's prop proposed for the location. We've taken their prototype and we've modified it to be more in keeping and compliant with the neighboring properties in the area up there. We've added more glass to the corner and we've addressed the corner with additional canopies. We've changed the standard brick, which is a gray brick, to a white brick. We've added a buff stone material above the canopies and then all the, the storefront coping and all that will be black. We've got an accent of a Trex wood product that'll be a most likely like a teak color. It's not been selected. Well, I, let's say the, there it is. That shows you the, um, the exterior materials. It's a very simple building. All the glazing will be to the corner. All our back of house stuff will be away from the street so that as people drive down West Atlantic, they will not see our utilities or the drive throughs Any other questions? That's all I have. It's a very simple building. And thank you again for letting us present. Thank you very much. And for the city, Ms. Alvarez, please. We can never see. Let's see. Hopefully this is the right one. So Regions West Atlantic, um, the applicant went over basically where it's at, but just for a brief overview, it's the corner of West Atlantic and Wally Road, and that is the uh, southeast corner of that intersection. It's right across the street from the uh, very busy plaza that has just underwent uh, quite a bit of a renovation um, just to the north. So it's zone GC with a GC land use designation um, it, there is a single family to the south and multi-family to the east the existing use is commercial and so they are proposing a financial institution or a banquet drive-through um, so again uh, demolition of the existing structure and the new bank is just over 1900 square feet with the drive-throughs that are um, on the south side of the property. So the building is centrally located on the property. There's two access points. Uh, one is uh, meant for ingress, one is for egress. Um, and those are both off of Watley, so we're not changing anything for the site, not um, adding any access from Atlantic Avenue. Um, they're providing 16 parking spaces, which exceeds the minimum amount that is required. They're providing ample um, landscaping and complying with the uh, minimum landscape buffer requirement along West Atlantic Avenue. Just to note, um, stacking requirement for drive-throughs, this is whether it's fast food or bank, any, any type of drive-through, minimum requirement is 100 feet. Um, and even if you have two, each one needs to meet that somehow. Um, their ATM lane is providing 80 feet. Their teller lane, um, which is the internal lane, uh, just adjacent to the building, is only 55 feet. The code allows, when supported um, by the city engineer, and you have his letter as your backup. Um, we've worked very closely between the engineer and the um, development team on this. And um, so, anyways, so the code allows that when the engineer supports the reduction, um, that no additional review is required. If the engineer does not support the reduction, then it goes as a waiver to the city commission. So in this case, this was not needed. Um, so you've got your um, reduced distances and um, the applicant was required to provide a basis for the um, reduction um, supporting it. 
So with the class five site plan, you've got findings. Um, we need to make sure that the land use map uh, and the zoning are consistent. They are. The floor area ratio maximum for GC um, land use is 3.0. The proposed floor area ratio is a 0 0.10. So they're compliant there. Um, concurrency, there are no issues that are identified. Traffic review, um, the county determined that um, the standards were met and that there would be less than uh, 20 peak hour trips. I did have to double check that today to make sure that less than 20 peak hour trips. I double checked that today um, and that was correct. And there's sufficient um, solid waste. Uh, for consistency as part of your findings, uh, we just need to make sure that the performance standards and the comp plan are met. This, in the standards for site plans, there's no noted concerns with the application. The site design utilizes access from Watley Road, as we mentioned. Traffic, again, there's two access points. Um, hopefully there's no impact on the neighborhood. None has been um, anticipated, and um, hopefully those two access points will also alleviate any issues closer to the intersection um, with West Atlantic Avenue. And there were no um, items of note or regarding concern anyways for the comp plan. Compliance with the LDRs, again, development standards of met, open space over 31%. I believe the minimum is 25%, so they do exceed that, um, providing the landscape buffer. They've got their landscaping adjacent to residential zoning, they're compliant with lighting, and again, they're exceeding their minimum parking requirement. So those were your site plan findings. Landscape plan findings, um, there are a few here as well. They're also in your staff report, just in general, um, Review of the site plan was found to be in compliance. There are eight trees that'll be removed, six that'll be relocated, and 10 trees and palms that'll be protected. So um, the existing trees um, that I guess will remain 16, and they're, they're providing or accounting for 16 of the 13 um, required canopy trees, and then they've got eight new ones and then of course, the hedges and other um, landscaping improvements. So again, the landscaping plan was found to be in compliance. Architectural elevations and aesthetics, we have specific findings um, that the proposal meets the minimum aesthetic standards, show proper design concepts, and that it's appropriate to the surroundings. And then we have our specific criteria in conformity with good taste and good design. Um, it's appearance of providing an appearance of quality. It's not going to have a, a negative impact on the uh, values or the appearance of the area around it and that it's in harmony. So um, just again, these are two elevations, uh, the elevation facing Watley and the elevation facing West Atlantic Avenue. Just in general, staff found that um, we thought the board could find that it's in good taste and design, generally harmonious with the corridor incorporates some elements that are found in the corridor, but um, while also it's distinguishing itself um, from other developments as well. Um, just to note, and this is something that um, we spoke with the applicant early on, and um, n it's nothing that's required, nothing under your purview, just to put it on the record as um, a suggestion if, if the applicant would like to um, this is the elevation facing West Atlantic, so the north elevation. There's, there's a large blank wall there. It is lovely painted brick, which is nice on its own as well. But um, we thought maybe that could be an opportunity for a mural. Um, the city just recently adopted a revised um, mural ordinance where murals are now allowed in um, other areas of the city. It was quite limited before, and this is just a few weeks ago, I believe, is when we adopted it. So now it's allowed in uh, throughout the city in many commercial areas, this area being one of them. And so we just thought that could be an opportunity. Again, it's up to them, and it would be under the purview of the Public Arts Advisory Board. So that's the findings. You've uh, got your board actions that are at the end of your report. And if you have any questions, I'm here. Thank you, Ms. Alvarez. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak on at this time on this item? OK. 
Okay, Mr. Lynn, Mr. Marshall, do you have any rebuttal from the city's report? Okay. So now we go to board comments. Ms. Thomas, would you like to start, please? Chair, if you don't mind. Sorry. Chair, there was one thing I, I did want to clarify regarding the stacking. <clears throat> so in the in section 469D3C5, um, this provision allows them to request a reduction in the stacking. And the actual language in the code states the city engineer shall provide a written determination regarding the request to reduce the stacking distance. A denial to reduce the minimum stacking distance may be appealed to the city commission and processed as a waiver request. So the city engineer is the one tasked with making that decision and it would be actually an appeal of that decision to city commission. So the stacking has already been approved by the city engineer. I just wanted to make sure that it's clear that that's actually been approved and that they're compliant with the reduction granted by the city engineer. Terrific. Yeah, we got that letter in our packet. So thank you. I think, thank you for that clarification. All right, Ms. Thomas. So yet again, my questions get answered ahead of time. Thank you. So mm -hmm. I think it looks great and uh, it's going to be a good improvement. That's all. All right, Ms. Gray, please. Uh, I actually think it's, it's a great project. Um, I have no objections. I do hope you consider the option. I, the word mural has kind of a connotation um, that I don't think everybody understands. Um, we're not looking for graphic artists to go out and do, you know, I know your brand and, and that type of thing. Um, but there's an opportunity for a splash of color or how come we like people? <laughs> you know, something. So don't think mural like mural as we envision it. And I hope you'll consider it. Um, my parents live in that side of town and it could use a little color. <laughs> but congratulations on a good project. Thank you. Ms. Paris. Um, yeah, I think it's a definite improvement to that building that's there now. Um, and I just had a question, maybe it's for Brett on the on the trees. Uh, along Atlantic Avenue, do you use some, some stoppers? Is that Chair, right? I believe that um, the individuals coming to speak arrived after the swearing in, so just want to make sure that either confirms he was sworn in or get him sworn in now. All right. Would you like to be sworn in, please? And if, if there's anybody else that arrived late um, that you plan to speak, go ahead and be sworn in now as well, please. By the authority vested in me as a notary of the state of Florida, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. My, my question was, do you, um, you think you can get the Simpson stoppers at 16 foot? I, um. I reviewed uh, available material. Um, I believe there are some growers that of trees at that size but it'll be a while down the line but um we can confirm yeah and if you if you didn't then i suppose you just have to work it out with staff what what you could provide at that as a substitution i suppose so yeah. no when it, time comes i know a, a plant availability is so um low and then those are such large trees that you've specified but i i think you've done a nice job thank you is there anything else uh, let me see, you have overhead lines on the south side. Is that where the only overhead lines are? Green. Uh, I believe so. Okay. Yep, that's all. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Cohen. I, I don't have any comments. Okay, Ms. Perdo. Uh, I think it's a great project and a great addition. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks. All right. Mr. Baffer. Yeah, so <clears throat> got a few problems with this concept. I mean, I'm not a traffic engineer, but I'm going to respectfully disagree with the city engineer. Um, having having the drive through an ATM at the entrance is not a good idea. I don't understand why the drive through and the ATM are not on the opposite side of the building, so they've got the whole length of the or whole whole size of the the building to to wrap around with cars. Um, I expect that cars will be backing up on Watley Road, and it's just it's just not a good plan. Um, you know, it's a it's a 1,900 square foot suburban drive-through bank branch, and it looks like 
suburban drive through ink branch. I really wish that the designer could have made this look something a little better than what we've got. Um, it's the only building uh, proposal I think that I've seen on this board that has brick. Um, we don't see a lot of brick in, in Delray. Um, and especially if we're thinking about uh, maybe wanting to put a mural on it, um, I don't think that that's really conducive with, with the, the finish that they, that they have. And just in general, looking at, looking at the site plan, I know that I'll trust the, the civil engineer's calculations for impervious space, but it just looks like a lot of pavement. And I know that's what it is. It's a lot of pavement, but there, there's got to be a better way to have something other than just you know an entire site full of pavement with a little building in the middle so I, I just I just think this this hasn't really been thought through the way that it should okay, thank you um, thanks board for your comments um, you know we welcome investment in Stillery Beach so thank you for coming thanks for the development um, I concur with my colleagues that um, mural would be fantastic on that wall as it faces West Atlantic Avenue and um, some sort of a splash of color. I, whether you do some sort of just splash of color or hire a graphic artist, that's not under our purview, so we welcome that opportunity cer certainly. Um, and yeah, I think the project's terrific, so um, could I get a motion, please. Can I just say one more thing about sure, that? Sure, of course. I just wanted to say something about the drive-through, but um, I personally haven't been to a drive-through in on a, at a bank for probably three years. So I think, I mean, I haven't been to my bank in probably that long too. And I don't use um, the tellers as much as I used to. I used to, but things have changed recently, and and you know, I don't know. So I, I would think that the requirements um, would be less just by how people are using mobile phones for deposits or um, getting cash at, at grocery stores and things like that. I just wanted to say that. And that side of town tends to be a little bit older also, so I'm happy they have the parking that they can, they will go inside. They. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other board comments? Can I get a motion, please? Sure. Move approval of the Class 5 site plan 2022-201 landscape plan and architectural elevations for Regions West Atlantic, uh, 1,904 square foot bank with a drive through facility located at 4760 West Atlantic Avenue by finding that the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and meets criteria set forth in the land development regulations. The second. I second. Okay, Rochelle, can you please call roll? Stephen Cohen? Yes. Allison Thomas? Yes. Benjamin Baffer? No. Carol Perez? Yes. Annette Gray? Yes. Linda Purdell? Yes. Dana Adler? Yes. Thank you. You've been approved. All right, good evening. For the record, I'm Alexis Rosenberg, Senior Planner with Development Services Department. I'd like to enter into the record city case file number 2022-013, which is a Class 5 site plan, landscape plan, and architectural elevations for the construction of a four-story mixed-use development located at the properties addressed 302, 318, 338 and 346 Southeast Fifth Avenue. And we're here with Neil Schiller, who's the agent for the application. 
Uh, board, any ex parte communication on this item? No. 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 Okay. Mr. Schiller, is Mr. it? Mr. Schiller. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good evening, Madam Chair and Honorable Board Members. My name is Neil Schiller. I'm with Government Law Group, uh, located at 137. Northwest First Avenue just across the street from City Hall and I'm here tonight representing 318 Southeast Fifth Avenue LLC with me tonight are our team members in the back uh, from WGI we have Jared Purser our planner and John Harrigan our landscape architect uh, our architect is Norberto Loiana um, from Slattery and Associates um, our uh, Landscape architect, sorry, John Harrigan is also from EcoPlan, correct? And uh, our civil and surveyor, Matt Kahn, is here tonight, as well as our client. Uh, we are seeking a Class 5 site plan application to allow for the development of a four-story mixed-use building with 26 multifamily units and about 4,500 square feet of ground floor retail. No density bonuses are being sought. No variances and waivers are being sought no rezoning is being sought so the project is a permitted use and is under the maximums under the code this is the location of the project uh, in between second and third street it's literally on the corner southwest corner of third street and fifth avenue surrounding uses on the site again the site is 0.88 acres um, oops uh, you have Mallory, Town Squ uh, Mallory Square townhomes to the east, the Aloff Hotel to the north, and single family to the, uh, to the west. And now I have uh, Jared come up and walk you through the site plan, some of the renderings and elevations. Good evening, Jared Purser with WGI. So this slide did have some animations, but we, um, we have retail components along the ground floor, along Fifth Avenue and Third Street. We have our plaza in the bottom right of the screen. You can see in the corner that's meeting the civic requirement that has bicycle parking, water features, and benches and landscape. The parking area, which you see central to the site, is underneath the building and also along the alleyway on the west side, which is at the top right of your screen. And above the parking is the multifamily portion of the building, which is 26 units, um, two and three bedroom units. So you have your retail along Fifth Avenue and Third Street and your multifamily units above the parking. Uh, it's a four story building. And then we're meeting and exceeding the streetscape and curb zone requirements along Fifth Avenue and Third Street. And meeting and exceeding the required setbacks as well. So we have a few renderings of the project. This is looking south along the Fifth Avenue facade. And you can see the four stories, the increased setbacks on the top floors to soften the impact to the adjacent properties. The materials and colors are consistent with the CBD district guidelines and are compatible and harmonious with the adjacent properties. We have another view looking south here. This is a little bit further west on 3rd Street looking south at the building. You can see the civic area again in your left corner. And this is the primary facade along Fifth Avenue uh, with the main entrance there in the middle of the building. And these were some additional views that were included with the package. Thanks, Jared. Now we're gonna talk about the uh, criteria found in the code for a class 5 site plan approval um, first is con uh, conformity with the land use map uh, you can see the site highlighted subject site uh, the future land use is uh, CC city center with zo zoning uh, CBD central business district and you can see how we are consistent with the east side of the street 
And then further, you can see directly from the comprehensive plan um, how commercial core, sorry, instead of city center, it was commercial core. Commercial core is consistent with CBD. In fact, CBD is the preferred zoning district for commercial core. So we are consistent with the land use map. From a concurrency perspective, uh, portable water and sewer capacity is available. From drainage perspective, uh, we have on-site retention, which won't impact level of service. From a transportation perspective, there are only 136 new daily trips, and we have a TPS letter provided by Palm Beach County and is included in the file. Um, parks and open space, we have uh, 1,590 square feet of civic open space, uh, in addition to a, a $13,000 um, park impact fee that uh, we're required to pay. And I just want to point out that the open space in the Civic Plaza is more than what is required uh, by code. We'll get to that. From a solid waste perspective, capacity is available at the Solid Waste Authority in ISO until 2045. And we have a, a school report, a SCAD report, that shows no negative impact on our schools. Now we look to consistency with the comprehensive plan. And I pointed out a, a slew of uh, comprehensive plan policies and highlighted the various provisions and sections of those policies for your review. I'm not gonna read all of these because I don't feel like it's necessary. However, I'm just gonna read a couple. Um, so uh, policy HOU 3.1.2 is protect existing established residential neighborhoods from the encroachment of non-residential uses. Uh, again, the location of this property along Southeast 5th does that, protecting that single family uh, neighbor, home neighborhood to the, to the west. Um, uh, then again, uh, policy HOU 1.1.6 uh, highlight beauty, flexibility, and innovation with respect to the existing neighborhood character. One of the things you'll hear is that the neighbors, even though they're not here tonight, the neighbors do want some opportunities for uh, neighborhood retail in the area that they can walk to. Um, so that's comprehensive plan. I want to talk a little bit about the Osceola Park uh, plan update from 2019 to show you that we're consistent with this too. Um, strategy 2.1, create opportunities for new commercial redevelopment and adaptive reuse in the neighborhood, uh, particularly on Southeast 2nd and Southeast 5th Avenue, we're doing that. Uh, and then 3.2, uh, promote desired neighborhood, neighborhood uses within walking distance of the neighborhood like restaurants, pubs, and grocery stores. Uh, so we feel like we're doing that with this development as well. Compliance with the LDRs. So there are a lot of land use, land development regulations that we have to comply with. I just want to point out uh, several of these. One, from a height perspective, we're under the height. Uh, there's 54 feet uh, maximum uh, that does not include parapet. We're at 49 feet. That doesn't include uh, the top of parapet. Top of parapet is at uh, 56 feet, 4 inches, but we're under the height. Uh, we meet and exceed all of the setbacks, front, rear, and side. Uh, dwelling units, a mix of units types is encouraged, and we have 26 total units, 16 two-bedroom and 10 three-bedroom units, which provides a mix of, of unit types. Um, street safe standards, again, we meet and exceed all of those standards, as well as storefront frontage. Civic open space, we're 146% of the required amount. So we're over uh, the required amount of civic open space that the project is supposed to provide, provide by the code. Um, 63 spaces, uh, parking spaces are required as part of the development. We're providing 63 spaces, uh, including 19 compact spaces and two EV chargers. And then uh, 19 total bicycle spaces are required, 18 are being provided. Uh, so John, if you could briefly come up here and talk about the landscape plan, I want to highlight that as part of our presentation because we all know landscaping is very important in the city. Sure, John Harrigan from EcoPlan 310 Southeast 18th Street in Fort Lauderdale. Um, the landscape plan is uh, primarily consists of uh, street trees, uh, oaks along uh, Southeast uh, Fifth Avenue. Uh, we have some Alexander palms that are in some of the uh, sidewalk planters between the oaks and the building. Um, again, uh, with a number of oaks um, in the civic space and uh, similarly along the uh, streetscape on the, the north side. Um, 
other than that, it's uh, a fairly simple palette um, with um, uh, various shrubs and ground covers uh, separating uh, the pedestrian space from uh, Southeast Fifth Avenue. And um, we have a fairly limited uh, amount of landscape on the west side, uh, just where the uh, uh, site plan permitted some vegetation uh, near the um, entrance to the garage and sort of that northwest corner. Great. Thank you so much, John. Roberto, you want to come up and talk about architectural elevations and go through some of the architectural analysis that you have to do as part of a class five? You want, to, you want me to click? Yes. Please. Okay. Good afternoon. Well, my name is Norberto Loyano, um, 2060 Northwest Boca Raton Boulevard. Um, well, we are, um, you know, uh, consistent with the uh, masonry modern. <clears throat> we incorporated, um, you know, the uh, the uh, tripartite um, as the code requires, you know, for the building with the storefront for the uh, basement base. Uh, the two and second, second and third floor, you know, is the the, the mid part. And the, and the upper part is the, the fourth floor. Um, you know, it's a lot of movement in the facade, you know, ins and outs, the change of planes, um, you know, light and, and shadow. Uh, you know, I believe that the uh, colors are in line with uh, the guidelines. We incorporated the element of the, uh, the wood veneer and the west side, you know, where the second floor um, uh, is the, uh, the the pool deck, uh, which is a screening, you know, with the six foot uh, uh, wood uh, barrier that uh, you know uh, for uh, uh, you know that is um, screening the uh, <coughs> the humidity uh, that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, but for the uh, residential on the west side. Okay. On the north facade, you know, it's consistent <laughs> with the with the with the east. Uh, you know, again, elements of the uh, the wood veneer. The uh, the the fourth floor is uh, with the, within the thirty foot setback required, uh, and the storefront, you know, is is consistent with the. Uh, the guidelines as the uh, extension of it. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, Norberto. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there some analysis to be done on the architectural elevations? And this is directly from your staff report that says the minimum aesthetic standards of this section have generally been met by the proposed architectural design. Obviously, we're masonry modern architectural design, which is one of the styles permitted in CBD. And additionally, we highlighted the stone and wood details that are used to soften the stark forms of modern forms of the building mass. Excellent verbiage, Alexis. Um, and again, criteria for, for board action. Uh, the proposed development is generally in conformity with good taste and good design as it incorporates many of the elements of masonry modern architectural style outlined in Delray Beach CBD architectural uh, guidelines. Uh, strives to respect the, the single family character while providing additional housing options and business opportunities within walking distance of the neighborhood. Additional, um, uh, additional architectural standards for you to consider, uh, the facade composition, tripartite composition. You just heard Noberto say that that is how we uh, designed the building. Masonry Modern is an approved architectural style. The walls, openings, roof, parking garages, uh, et cetera, urban, the reduction of urban heat design or heat islands um, is important and building, green building practices, we will meet or exceed the, the lead minimum. Um, so there are a couple issues for you to consider tonight. One is the location of our pedestrian walkway. That's something that staff had raised as a potential concern. Um, uh, up top, it's, this is the, the code section that says buildings with more than 250 feet of street frontage shall provide a pedestrian passageway at least 10 feet wide connecting rear alleys and or parking to the public sidewalk. 
the passageway elevation shall have storefront windows with a base between nine inches. So anyway, that's not, that's not important. It's really the pedestrian passageway and where it's located. So we've highlighted on the site plan uh, in yellow the pedestrian passageway and then the green area, which is the civic open space which connects to the sidewalk. This is um, sort of a, a, a uh, annotated version of our site plan that shows you we have 257 feet uh, of building before we get to the pedestrian passageway. In that pedestrian passageway, we're 13 feet wide at some point and 10 feet wide at another point. Uh, and then there's 25 feet to 30 feet of additional building. So the pedestrian passageway, uh, while technically not in the middle of the building, there is no requirement that it be in the middle. It just must break up the mass, which we feel that it does. Uh, additionally, we, we tried to show this on our, uh, one of our renderings to give it a little bit more perspective. Where that gentleman is talking on his cell phone is the entrance to the pedestrian passageway, uh, which is 13 feet uh, wide and, and, and between the 257 foot long part of the building and, uh, and 25 feet of uh, the other space. Uh, the other issue is the tower feature. Um, so the code says, Brab, you guys, may provide relief from the additional setback required above the third story for building entrances, lobbies, and vertical circulation areas configured as tower elements consistent with the architectural character of the building and setback relief for parking garage floors above the third story. But it's really the tower element and the setback on over the third floor. So you see that yellow area is where staff would like a setback, I believe an additional 10 feet. However, that tower area is uh, critical to provide access to the floor floor as well as architectural design. I mean, um, that is uh, the centerpiece of, of the development as you've seen previously in our renderings. And we'd ask SPRAB to uh, grant relief for this setback above the third floor for this decorative tower feature that also uh, provides you know, access to the third floor. In conclusion, um, the building proposed fits within the box uh, created by the code. Uh, we're not asking for any variances, uh, waivers, rezonings, density bonuses, et cetera. We meet or exceed the LDR minimums. Uh, and again, we're masonry modern with uh, exterior elements. And for your consideration, we would ask you to please vote to approve uh, the project. Uh, the residential neighborhood is protected by the building. The tower element is consistent with masonry modern and seeks relief uh, for a portion of the tower. And then a pedestrian walkway is provided and meets the code. And we're here to answer any questions. I have my whole team here. And uh, thank you so much for your indulgence. Thank you, Mr. Stiller. Right. Um, is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak on this item? We actually uh, let staff. Oh, sorry. <laughs> staff, of course. Miss Rosenberg. It went on so long. It went on so long. I thought it was finished. I'm sorry. <laughs> Pardon me. I'm sorry. No worries. Good evening again. Um, Mr. Schiller went into yeah quite a bit of detail on the project, so I'll try and be brief. Um, as discussed, the property is a little under an acre and it's comprised of four parcels on the southwest corner of Southeast 3rd Street and Southeast 5th Avenue, also known as South Federal Highway, and it's also located in the Osceola Park neighborhood. The zoning is Central Business District within the Central Core Subdistrict, and it has a land use of Commercial Core. The proposed use for the site is mixed use with ground floor retail and 26 multifamily units. Going into the existing conditions, the surrounding area um, of the surrounding area, the subject site's currently vacant with the exception of an 800 square foot commercial building at the south end of the site. The Aloft Hotel is located to the north, which has ground floor retail. To the west are single family residences with, within the Osceola Park neighborhood. The Mallory Square townhomes are to the east and there's vacant property to the south that's currently under review for eight three story townhomes. The request is for the construction of a 79,732 square foot four-story mixed-use building with 4,479 square feet of ground floor retail and 26 multifamily units, which are a mix of two and three bedrooms. 
The development has a storefront frontage type um, that provides a required civic open space in the form of a plaza at the northeast corner of the site. The building also has a stucco finish with scored wood veneer and has a neutral color scheme accented with light blue colors. There's also a tower feature, as Mr. Schiller mentioned, uh, located central to the building, which as part of the request is being proposed within that fourth floor setback. On the site plan here, the civic open space is highlighted in green. There's an on-site bus shelter, which is highlighted in orange, and the required pedestrian passageway that provides connection from the civic open space to the parking area in the rear is highlighted in purple. On the second floor, develop, uh, the development provides interior clubhouse space and a rooftop terrace with a pool and pool deck along the west side of the building. Uh, because the rooftop terrace is across the alley from single family residences, the code does require a six foot high privacy screen along the length of the terrace. Um, LDR section 3.1.1 lists the required findings for the approval of all development applications. So as it relates to the land use, the Central Business District is a preferred zoning district of the Commercial Core land use designation, and it permits general retail and multifamily residences at a maximum density of 30 dwelling units per acre, which the project is just about 30 dwelling units per acre. Uh, regarding Criterion B, the development meets the concurrency of the Always Delray Comprehensive Plan. Regarding open space, based on the area of the site, the development is required to provide a minimum of 852 square feet of civic open space, and they're providing 1,590 square feet in the form of a plaza. And then as it relates to traffic, as Mr. Schiller mentioned, the traffic impact analysis and traffic performance standards letter from Palm Beach County states that the proposed development will result in additional 136 trips, with nine of those trips being peak hour trips. And additionally, turn lanes will not be required on South Federal Highway. Going into consistency with the LDR and comprehensive plan, the proposed development does generally meet the standards and there's no identified concerns related to the overall consistency with Article 3.2. The proposed development is also consistent with the Always Delray Comprehensive Plan, particularly the policies from the neighborhood districts and corridors element, the housing element, and the mobility element, which speaks to provide diverse housing types throughout the city um, at high densities and promote larger living spaces and civic open spaces, and utilization of alleys to disperse traffic and access um, to the property. Criterion D requires compliance with the LDR. The staff report provides the required and proposed development standards, which includes height, uh, streetscape, lighting, and parking. And overall, the development complies with the applicable development standards in the central business district. So a couple things to note, the maximum allowed building height is 54 feet. However, parapets are allowed to exceed the uh, maximum height by four feet. Therefore, the proposed 56 feet and four inches to the top of parapet is within the maximum height. Also, there is an additional setback restriction for the development, um, which includes an additional front setback above the third floor, which is 20 feet, and an additional setback um, in the rear because the property is adjacent to single family residential, which is a 30 foot setback in the rear. The board shall make certain findings with respect to the site's landscaping, including the objectives of landscaping regulations and the site and landscaping design standards. Uh, the required street, uh, street trees, which are live oaks, are provided along both Southeast 5th Avenue and Southeast 3rd uh, Street. And in addition, there's planters within the front setback along Southeast 5th Avenue with a mixture of Alexander palms. Um, also, live oaks are located in the civic open space and Japanese blueberry trees are provided on each side of the driveways off of Southeast 5th Avenue going into the parking garage. The Arborist report states that the total proposed in lieu fee is $26,300 to provide mitigation for the removed trees that are in excess of the proposed 50 replacement trees. Regarding the architectural elevations, a complete analysis is provided in the staff report on pages 8 through 10. Uh, with, when reviewing the elevations, the board should consider whether the design is appropriate in conformity with good taste and harmonious with, to the general area, and whether the project meets the Always Delray Comprehensive Plan. And based on staff's analysis, the elevations are deemed compliant with the minimum standards. 
The architectural style is identified as masonry modern, which is an anticipated uh, architectural design in the central business district. Uh, the CBD architectural design guidelines state that stone and wood details are often used to stop, uh, soften the stark modern forms of the building mass. Exterior finishes in the masonry modern language are typically stucco, and the color palette in Florida for this style is typically comprised of whites and creams with some sea greens and blues highlighting details. The proposed building provides a smooth stucco finish with accents of scored wood veneer and soft blues are incorporated along the top of the building. Uh, also basic geometrics are utilized to emphasize the solidity of the mass and the use of eyebrows, awnings, and terraces are implemented to provide shade for pedestrians and residences. Going into the tower features mentioned, the front setback above the third story is 20 feet. However, LDR section 4.413 subsection K2B uh, allows the site plan review and appearance board to provide relief from the additional setback requirement above the third floor for building entries, lobbies, and vertical circulation areas as long as they're configured as a tower element and consistent with the architectural style of the building. So the proposed tower feature encroaches into the 20-foot setback um, above the third floor about eight feet. The base is characterized by vertical glass doors with an overhanging eyebrow above the main entrance. The middle contains stacked aluminum impact windows leading up to the fourth floor, and the tower is further emphasized by an applied butterfly roof element at the top. Uh, therefore, the board should consider whether the proposed tower is configured as a prominent tower feature appropriate to be in the required uh, front setback above that third floor. Here's another graphic showing the east and west colored elevations. So again, you'll see the tower encroachment above the third floor. Um, additionally, the pedestrian passageway, which is required for buildings with more than 250 feet of street frontage, is located on the north side of the building, which connects the civic open space to the parking area in the rear. And the intent of the LDR requirement is to provide pedestrian connection and also to break up the mass of the building. Therefore, the board should consider if the passageway serves both intended purposes. Uh, so just to touch base on the board considerations, um, again, just considering uh, whether the additional measures should be taken to further protect the resident, uh, residential neighborhood from the west, um, if any additional architectural detailing would assist further enhancing a masonry modern style, whether the tower element is configured as a tower or a prominent tower feature within that uh, additional setback above the third floor, and whether the proposed location of the pedestrian passageway meets the LDR. And then here are the technical notes which are required to be completed prior to issuance of a building permit. They include things like requiring the property to be replatted, also um, for a landscape maintenance agreement, um, meeting the standards of uh, Florida green building certification, uh, et cetera. And here are your board motions. That concludes my presentation and I'm available for questions. Thank you, Ms. Rosenberg. <laughs> All right, now, is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak on this item? If you'd like to do so, please come to the podium on my right. Can you please state your name and address for the record, please? Alice Finst, 707 Place Tavant, that's in the Shadow Lane neighborhood, Delray Beach, 33445. Um, I am a master gardener, so I've sort of tuned in to all of this, and I'm just wondering, I had a couple of questions. Um, I just wonder how does this height of this building overwhelm adjacent properties? Um, are they gonna be living in shadows? Um, and it just seems massive and overwhelming. Um, I don't know if you can put plants on every balcony to make it not so huge and overwhelming. Um, and the, the height 
limit there is 54 and he was saying 49 so I don't know what happens at the top of 49 if if he manages to cover or not cover that height limit I think it's just too much too big and too overwhelming at Delray Beach thank you thank you and I'm glad Spence. I'm not living near it <laughs> thank you okay any rebuttal mr. Schiller yes uh, let's make it very brief uh, two points we're within the height limit as your staff will confirm and uh, we are 30 feet uh, set back uh, from the property line and this is three points I'm sorry this is CBD in our in our downtown and, and so um, thank you we're happy to answer any questions thank you very much and thank you so much to your staff who's been extremely helpful Terrific. thank you okay so we're up to board comments Ms. Gray, it is your turn. Begin, please. Okay. Um, despite the fact that LDRs are met and traffic impact might be low, I think there is a missed opportunity in the design here. Um, I think the attempts to soften the building doesn't quite hit the mark. Uh, I don't think the stone and the wood accomplishes uh, what you were trying to have it accomplish. Maybe it's just not enough of it. I'm not sure. And we are not allowed to design from. I'm just going to cut off Ryan and say it. Design from <laughs> from the dais. <laughs> Uh, but I think there's a missed opportunities here. I think the columns overwhelm on the second floor, particularly overwhelms. It, it gives it like a motel feel to me, and um, I don't. I, for that reason, I don't think it's harmonious with with the community. Um, I, I'm not sure what the intent or the um, creative juices were. Uh, I just don't think it, it's. It's, it's it doesn't hit the mark uh, it looks all commercial um, and it, it I'm not sure I don't think that design is a good fit and I know that masonry modern is allowed in that area and because I can't get past that I also cannot um, in good conscience then support the column um, feature request Thank you. Ms. Perez. Okay, so um, I don't really have any problem with the entry feature being higher, and I don't have any issues with the pedestrian walkthrough. But I agree that um, I think the building needs to be tweaked a little bit, and th these are my issues with it. In that corner, so it'd be the northeast corner, on the very top floors, you have two blank walls coming together, and it looks like it was just forgotten. And that is a prominent corner. Your um, civic space is right there, and I think that that needs a little more attention to detail. Also, um, and I agree with Alice um, on your back side. Of course, you know you have renderings of the sides that have the landscape. So along the alley. Um, I, I did look at the landscape plan for the amenity deck, and there, there's nothing to soften that edge there on that amenity deck. And I think that it would make the project better to um, get some higher level palm trees or something, some trees up on top there. So you could soften that edge, and that would also provide something to the neighboring property so that when they're looking up at an angle, they're going to see a little landscape. Um, and those, those are my two biggest issues, so I really wish you would come back and maybe solve a couple of those things. That's it. Thank you. Mr. Cohen. Mm. Uh, I'm looking for those renderings. I lost them. Where are they? Ah. Well, um, I, I kind of agree with my colleagues. There's something about this building that's just too plain. 
for me. It's, it's very rectilinear, very gray. Um, I don't mind the tower. I think the pedestrian walkway doesn't really serve a purpose if it's way over on one side. Um, the south side of the building is very just plain. I know that's not the primary direction that people are heading on the road. Um, yeah, I just think it, it's not quite up to par. I mean, well, so I, I, you know, just in general, I think it, it's just one masonry modern structure after another that we're presented with. And there's quite a few in this stretch um, of, of Federal Highway. So that's it. Those are my comments. Thank you. Ms. Perdue? Um, I agree. I think it's just way too massive for Delray Beach. Um, I don't find it an interesting building. Um, I know it meets minimum requirements, but I don't want to be minimum in Delray. I want to be, this is fabulous when somebody comes before us. Um, the, my other concern is the retail. I know you're saying it's for pedestrians, but we have three other buildings on um, Fifth Avenue, one of them on the north end and the 100 block. That has retail on the bottom. I don't think there's ever been any retail use in it. And I think the problem is, is that I don't think the, uh, I know you're saying it's pedestrian. There, there's gotta be parking. I, you know, if there's a store I wanna go to, I'm not gonna go into some parking structure and then come around all the way down that walkway and come back around. That's what I think is keeping this retail prop, these retail properties on Fifth Avenue vacant. If you drive down Fifth Avenue, you can count how many are vacant. So I think that needs to be rethought, how that's going to be um, more user friendly um, to you know, make the uh, tenants successful. You know, um, I don't have a problem with the tower. Um, I would like to see um, a softening of the front. There's, uh, and again, that one wall on the, that's just solid. Um, I'm gonna make it a green wall maybe if it's a green building. There's, I just think there's there's so much potential that uh, just why say let's just do the minimum. Let's, let's, I mean, an architect, I think could go in there and you know say let's, let's make it really spectacular. Mr. Botfer. Yeah, I, I like the term missed opportunity, uh, especially as it pertains to the civic open space. I, I love the fact that they've got this prominent, enormous uh, civic open space on the northeast corner. Um, I think it needs a little shade. I think that um, about 10 o'clock in the morning, it's going to be um, really unbearable to, to where it's going to be, that space, that plaza area is going to be unusable. Let's so somehow get some shade in there. I think maybe there, there are some, um, they said live oaks, um, but you know the, the palm trees that are shown in this rendering is not going to really create much way of shade and just um, I, I think that something can be better there and I'm also concerned about what the ground floor looks like from the alley I, I, um, I we just had a so I don't I don't know what that is it, it, maybe is it if that's chain link fence or, or something but um, there's there's no landscaping there. There's just, it looks kind of industrial parking garage-ish because that's what it is. So just, I know that the people behind all have um, you know, stockade privacy fences, so they're not really looking directly at that, but I just think that that's kind of a ugly alley that um, in the missed opportunity, I think is the, is the, the, the theme. Okay, Ms. Thomas. I apparently saved up all my comments for the last one. <laughs> um, really quick question. How, what's the story, how many stories is the A-loft? Isn't it four? I believe so, and I think we have an aerial that shows the A-loft. So the A-loft is so immediately is to the, the north. the uh, Caspian to the north. Okay. Because I, I agree with some of my colleagues' comments and I disagree with others. One, I think it's actually going to complement because Aloft and Caspian have that same feel. I actually like the modern and I think it comes up a lot with the approved codes of the design of buildings. 
but I've never heard any of us like suggest maybe to send it back to the commission and try to get a different approval for outsides of the buildings because if if we're if we're constrained to four and some of us like or don't like or rather I know that we can't really say that but if it doesn't fit in the area then perhaps we need to suggest to, to the Commission to come up with or amend um, some of the buildings because I think that we say that often here um, I do have a similar concern on the alley side because I don't really know what the people in their backyards are going to look at so I would love to have more a uh, comprehensive plan or whether it be landscaping or a mural or something on there <laughs> um, but I have no problem with the tower I actually think it's gonna break up the building if you're looking at it and I think that's an added feature I love the civic space I love how big it is and I don't have a problem with where the pedestrian walkway is I think that'll actually help uh, mitigate some of the traffic on the is that third yeah so I think that would be helpful for people to cut through and I think it'd be a, a, a nice touch to the area so um, I I like the building actually so um, and that's all thank you okay. all right I guess it's my turn um, thank you for first of all thank you for investing in Delray Beach we, we really appreciate it um, we, we, we volunteer and we love our town that's why that's why we do this um, I said that I, I agree with most of my colleagues. I just think this is a missed opportunity. I think you're right, Mr. Baffer. That's the theme. Um, it, it's, a, it's a prominent acre property. Um, there are other buildings in the neighborhood that are, have similar design, um, but I think they're more interesting than this, honestly. I'm worried about the south elevation. I'm worried about the alleyway elevation. Um, I think the front elevation needs some more features. I happen to love the tower. I have no problem with the tower. Um, I would almost, I don't know, I can't design from the dais. We're not supposed to do that, but um, um, the blues, I don't think, are blue enough. Mm -hmm. um, and what else? I had some questions. Yeah, I mean, Mr. Ayano mentioned movement, light, shadow. I didn't see movement, light, and shadow, um, unfortunately. And yeah, I think it's just, it's a little too m massive. And I'm also, I have a concern that the, um, unlike some of the properties to the north, there's a lot of uh, single family homes that are right adjacent. And, and um, those single family homes are one story. So again, you have this sort of mass right next to these, and I think that needs to be kind of thought about. I honestly don't have so much of a problem with the height because it meets the, 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 the maximums, not the minimums, the maximums. Um, but I, I am concerned about those single family residences and what, they, what, ha, what they're seeing and then the shadow on, 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 on those dwellings. Um, and I don't know, I, I think that that civic space, you meet the requirements, the pedestrian passageway, you meet the requirements, but I think, again, I think there's, I think we can do better with that. I, don't, I, I can't tell you what exactly, but I think it really needs to be, I think um, the architects need to use their real creative juices to, to make this very, very special. I, I agree with Ms. Prudeau, like let's wow them. I mean, you have this, great opportunity to say something very special in our neighborhood that we love. So um, does anybody else need to say anything? Because this has been, you know, this is a big project. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so it, on the uh, west elevation, the cars park off of the alley. Yeah, like you're parking cars off the alley, right? Our you, can you pull in? Yes, we, we have uh, some parking off the alley, correct. Okay, and then after that parking, Roberto, is there a wall? Uh, partially a wall, which is uh, in line where the pool and the on the pool deck is. Uh, the rest is open. Is that um, is that just like concrete painted like the building or um, the wall, or, or is it louvered? The the the. 
go see yeah, the that, that one right here. Right. The west elevation. Yeah. So obvious it's it's a uh, low wall for most of the uh, building. Just you know where the pool is above mm -hmm. is the complete height. But down on the ground floor. And then obviously is is still parking on in front of that. What's this? I think the question no, is what, what is that? Yeah, what's that? Is that a top on top? Nope. The like you door? see right through? Yeah, I don't believe um, I don't believe that's a wall on the ground floor because this is a, there's a, a, a the low wall here. Mm -hmm. Okay, in there. From here up is all open. It's open. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this one is the one solid because it contains the pool, the pool vessel there. Okay, I understand. So you're seeing straight through to that garage All on right. either side? Yes. Okay. And also the uh, south side, we are... Um, can you like go to the next one? Yeah. Yeah, the south elevation is uh, on... You know, right on the property line. So there is very little opportunity to, you know, <laughs> do something there. That's well, you don't see it from the south, right? Because right. everybody's coming, everybody's coming, coming the opposite north. direction. <laughs> I can't be looking that far in the rearview mirror. <laughs> 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 or you have bigger issues. No, but you would see it from the neighborhood. Right. You yeah. would you see, see it, it walking. Um, if walking. you're a pedestrian yeah. walking. And this you're is walking just north. a solid wall. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's why I was saying maybe there put a green wall or something, um, like on IPIC where they have the plants and um, it, mm -hmm. rather than just this massive wall. Yeah. Um, just to add real quick, I think the only concern that I want to bring up with the south elevation regarding maybe implementing a green wall or something that we would have to check with the current development that's being proposed to the south because they would have a zero side foot or a zero foot side right. setback as well so it might we'd have to check but it might go up to that wall or right up to the property line but that would only be on the south elevation every other elevation has a setback. It would be totally covered basically is what you're saying by the other building if it gets approved and something gets built there yeah they would have a zero yeah, side foot setback Yes, please, please. So, uh, thank you so much, board, for your feedback. Uh, we've already started discussing about how we can implement some changes that are completely in line with your direction here tonight. Um, with your approval, we'd like to be placed on the next BRAB agenda meeting. Uh, we realize that's a fast turnaround for us, but our, our professionals are committed to doing that, including uh, providing more renderings and, and information. Yeah, that would be up to Miss Alvarez. <laughs> um, well, the board does, doesn't, de doesn't decide when something comes on an agenda. And of course, we don't know what will be submitted. We need to review it and evaluate it, make sure it is compliant. So once something is submitted, we can look at it. And of course, a majority of the review has already been conducted. Hopefully there's nothing significant I was going to say, hopefully, there's nothing significant that will be changed, but that's not what I'm intending. <laughs> that would that would uh, rise to the occasion of a significant review, is what I mean. Um, so we would just have to see what they submit. Okay. Yeah. So, Ms. Alvarez, uh, based upon the staff report and the presentations, I don't believe there was any additional notice requirements. Right. There's no notice requirements, just courtesy notices. Um, so hopefully, those who received a courtesy notice are paying attention and would know that it would be continued and would be watching our agendas but there's no public notice requirement for this then mr bennett do we do a we have a continuance i would recommend just a, a postpone with direction without a date certain okay. um the other concern i have about the request to be on the next agenda and i don't know if mr schiller knew this when he said it but we actually have a meeting in about two weeks which mm -hmm. is the next agenda um he may have been thinking a month out <laughs> and not two weeks um but just to clarify but with no additional notice requirements um, there's not a compelling need um, at least from the city side to give a date certain and as soon as the application submitted as soon as that's possible and then reviewed you know Amy will get it on the next available agenda at that point right just given staff's workload on other things and items that we already have anticipated for upcoming agendas so 
it's just like any other item we kind of throw it back into our workload and try to balance things out okay. right, so is there a motion to postpone mr. Bennett or well I just want to make sure first because the applicant specifically said they consider postponement to the next meeting and if they want to vote tonight you know they're they're entitled to one so just mr. Scheller is there any objection to being a motion to postpone without date certain uh, no objection right. oh so, yeah so if a board member wants to make that motion Can someone make that motion please I'll move to postpone uh, without a date certain and a second second oh okay can you please call roll Rochelle no. Gray, Ms. Gray, you were second. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. So that was the tie. Stephen Cohen. Yes. I'll take. Okay. Stephen Cohen. Yes. Allison Thomas. Yes. Benjamin Baffer. Yes. Carol Perez. Yes. Annette Gray. Yes. The Perdo. Yes. Dana Adler. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, and we may reach out to you individually in advance of the next meeting to just make sure we're on the right track. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right. Great. Does staff have any comments, Ms. Alvarez? Hello. Um, nothing significant. Um, but I did. I did just want to know that um, you know the three items that we had on tonight. Um, these were our three that we had been working on and um, so that was why we had to have this extra meeting otherwise they would have had to wait another couple of weeks um, because we didn't want to overload that January meeting so thank you <laughs> for um, agreeing to add on the meeting and I'm sure all of the applicants um, thank you as well so yes our next meeting is February 22nd um, and then after that it'll be March 22nd that's the meeting that I mentioned last time um, I will not be at that meeting I'll be off on spring break with my kids um, hopefully looking at colleges and mm -hmm. then um, so Anthea I believe will be here for that meeting um, and I just um, lost the other thing I was going to mention so maybe it'll come up before we leave <laughs> I don't know I'm so sorry <laughs> but I'm you know I always want to thank you also just for your thoughtfulness in con in considering all the items that we put before you and as you know, if you have any questions before the meeting, we're available. Um, I'll call, <laughs> I have to call Dana before um, the meetings, though. But, um, but yeah, if you ever have any questions or concerns about something that we're reviewing or noting in the report or you want some clarification on, please reach out to us. Thank you. There was, I think it may have been Board Member Thomas, but somebody brought up the uh, architecture uh, yes. guidelines for the CBD. Uh, just a reminder that that discussion has uh, started with the city commission and i don't know if it's been scheduled yet but i believe they will have a workshop um, in the near future to discuss um, the cbd guidelines on on architecture oh good so can right. you invite us to that uh, yes we can um absolutely thank you for pointing that out um we can um be sure to invite you to that so what prompted that discussion was um, in Art Deco building that went to an appeal mm -hmm. at, yep. at commission. You remember it. <laughs> um, it was the one with the lovely gold stripes on the side. So um, it, that was kind of, I think, what, what prompted that discussion. I, you know, obviously I, I don't know where the discussion will go, um, but I know there were some comments tonight about how we are seeing a lot of masonry modern. Mm -hmm. It's one of the seven styles, so they do have a whole, literally a whole book <laughs> to choose from. Um, and then if they don't want to go with one of those styles, they always have the option to propose a different style, go before city commission for approval of that style, and then come back through the process. So there's always many options. Um, you know, I, I think you do have it in your purview. Uh, hopefully I'm not speaking out of turn legally, but I think you do have it in your purview to say, you know, I don't think that this style is right for this place, <laughs> for this location is what I mean. Um, and, and because we did there, hear there that. are so many. And, and the word that I rung in my ears when I heard it was harmonious with the surrounding area. So. Right. You know that's that's a key I feel like a key word in some of the uh, findings for the architectural elevations and generally for the site plan that those are the types of things where 
the board has that ability to decide that this is not in har harmony with the neighboring area and could be detrimental. Well, I can't draw a straight line with a ruler, so I shouldn't be telling anybody how to design anything. But I have a question in terms of, is there an opportunity to kind of mix the styles a little bit, or would that be considered a style that's design build? Right, so there's not an opportunity within the regulations and only coming to you, but there is that opportunity if you go the route of getting it approved by the city commission. So first. if you mix the existing style, that is a new style and mm -hmm. you have to take that route. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. You can design your own style. Yeah, there you go. The yeah, next style. Time. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. All day, every day. And so, so far, I believe the, we've only had one building go through that, um, that path, and that was the Ray Hotel. And look how cool it is. Mm -hmm. Now they just have to get the Wi-Fi to work. <laughs> <laughs> the Ray? Oh, the Ray. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? Uh, well, I mean, is the masonry modern less expensive or something? Why, why are there? Yeah, so. For sure. Anyway, uh, for think? sure. I guess, I don't know. You got the options, you got the less is expensive way, options. Mm -hmm. Square, square box, no decoration. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> the shoe is a three year old with my, his my kids yeah. call them Minecraft houses. <laughs> they're like, this is what we draw in Minecraft. Mm -hmm. Right. So, is that right? Yep. So, um, Ms. Purdue is asking if there's any way to control any particular style in an area. And so, we don't have that specific control in the LDR to say, well, this style is appropriate for this subdistrict, but it's not allowed in another subdistrict. So we don't have anything like that currently, but like Mr. Bennett mentioned, as part of your re review criteria, you could make that consideration to say, but I don't you don't want the downtown sense. to look like a pud either. I right. mean, no, but there's areas in town where um, you have four corners and three of them are, are masonry modern, mm -hmm. basically the same houses. It's actually happening on my street. I have masonry modern across from me. The people who are building that house are going to build the house next to it. They're going to build the house two doors down and possibly a further one even further down the street. So they're all, and this is a street that is probably 15 houses. Mm. So um, it, it's overload. It'll look like a pub anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be yep. a subdivision. Yeah. <laughs> So that's, that was what I was just thinking. If there's some way to say, you know, like you can't have a bar within so many feet of a church, maybe you can't have can't. masonry modern, right. you know, in so many <laughs> feet of each other or something. Right. And, well, and because they are all individually designed, presumably anyways, um, it, you know, there are still deviations within the individual styles. Yep. So you hope that they are that different, but... Yeah. A, little, a little bit of mix doesn't hurt. It's also a trend, and yeah. we, hope, yeah, we hope that it will eventually kind of fall out of favor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just, you know, 15, an roof, my favorite, uh, 15 years ago, everybody, everything was, you know, Mediterranean yeah. or yeah. faux Mediterranean, yeah. and now that's considered that's looking so dated. Yeah. So yeah. Yep. It right. kind of goes in cycles. Hopefully it's a quick one. Yeah. <laughs> I just internally, it's all we're reviewing, obviously, because that's all you're seeing, and yeah, you know, it's just we're kind of tired of. Yeah. Well, it's for the young folks, you know. Yeah, our, our time is gone. <laughs> so I look at it. Anything else today? All right, meeting adjourned. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. See you in two weeks. See you in two weeks. Thank you for the candy. Welcome.